In our last segment, we started talking about creating a test project using MS Test. But before we can really start writing tests, we need to also add support for Entity Framework to our application. The way we're going to do that is first we're going to add some libraries. The first library we're going to need is the PostgreSQL Entity Framework Core. We're also going to need the corresponding design library. We need the Microsoft Entity Framework Core Tools package. And again, the corresponding design library. The design libraries have two possible purposes. The first is if you're doing database first, let's say you already have an existing database with a schema and relationships and foreign keys and things like that, you can use the design tools to reverse engineer that database into C-sharp entities. The other method is that you can do code first, which is what we're going to do today. We're going to take our existing POCOs, we're going to create a database context, and we're going to use those tools to generate migration, uh, schema migrations in C Sharp. And then we're going to apply those migrations to our Postgres database. So now that we have those libraries, we need to create a place to store our data access layers. So I'm going to create a new folder called data access. Inside of the data access folder, I'm going to create a new class called I to do context. And this is actually going to be an interface. And this interface is going to look like this. And we need to get some using statements in for some of these classes. All right, so now we have our interface created. And we also need an implementation of this. So our implementation looks like this. And you'll notice that we have a constructor that takes a DB context options instance and passes it to the base constructor for DB context. You'll also notice that we have this little squiggly saying that we haven't completely implemented the I to do context interface. So we're going to click on that. We're going to click on our little bulb here and tell it to stub out our interface methods. Problem solved. All right. Once we have this implementation, we're going to go down here and we're going to tell our dependency injection framework all about this implementation. So in Startup CS, under the Configure Services method, we're going to add some new services. And those services look like this. So we're going to say services.addDBContext with our DB context type. We're going to tell it to use PostgreSQL, and we're going to tell it to use the default connection for its connection string. The next line that we added is basically telling the dependency injection system to map any instance of our I to do context interface to be a concrete instance of to do list context or database context. There's that. And we also need to add that connection string to our configuration inside of app settings appdata.settings or appsettings.json. Uh, I'll, I'll learn how to speak English here eventually. 
And so those connection strings look like this. And where did these settings for this database connection string come from? Well, they came from the Docker Compose file that it was provided in our Bootstrap repository. And you'll see that we start up the Postgres database instance and we tell it to use these settings. Those are the same settings we're going to use in our connection string. Now, let's actually implement the create, retrieve, update, delete operations inside of our database context class. So right here, we're going to delete what's stubbed and paste in our pre-made implementation. And we need to add another using statement for system.link. But these methods are very simple and straightforward. Anybody should be able to recognize these as, as a, even a beginner in C Sharp and .NET. So we've got our update to do method that takes an ID and the updated data. We find that ID in our database context. If we can't, we throw an argument exception, which will then catch in our controller to return a 404. If we do find it, we copy the data from our provided to our existing. We save the changes in the database schema and we return the updated to do object. You know, to, we've got our delete operation, our add to do, our get to do. The most complicated is the update and it's not all that complicated. All right, now that we've done that, we have our libraries, we've linked it to our dependency injection, we have our implementations, we can create our schema migration. So we're gonna use .NET EF migrations add, and this first migration we're gonna call initial create. Your startup project does not reference entity. I'm certain we added that, but we'll, we'll do it again. .NET add package. Uh, version 3.1.4. Oh, no, not, not two, four. All right, let's try this again. And there, we've created the migrations. And if we look in here, we've got some new C Sharp code for that migration and for our database context, exactly as we would expect. Now, I have an instance of Postgres running via Docker and Docker Compose. The way I launched that was using that Docker Compose files by saying Docker Compose up to do DB. And we're going to apply our newly created migrations. So we'll say .NET EF database update. This will take those migrations we just generated and created and apply them to our PostgreSQL database. And we can verify that by saying psql dash h loopback username to do db database name to do password to do db. And we can list the tables dt. And you'll see that we now have a to do's table and an ef migration history table. This is how entity framework migrations check to see which migrations have been applied and which migrations haven't been applied. With that, we have fully implemented the requirements for Entity Framework to be used in our ASP.NET Core application. In the next segment, we're going to go ahead and do our test-first, test-driven development to implement some of the methods of our controller.